Join us, MrTruck.com, for truck reviews, trade reviews, and accessory reviews. If you have a short bed truck, you know it's not easy to hook up to a gooseneck. Pop-Up came out with these extensions from 9 inches to 16 inches to keep you from breaking out your back window when you're pulling a gooseneck trailer. And everybody uses a shore bed. That's the most proper truck there is, is a crew cab shore bed. So, protect that window. Mr. Truck with another truck review up in the Rockies. Today I have a 2021 Chevy Silverado RST Duramax, the baby Duramax, the three liter inline six. And we're at 277 horsepower, 460 pound feet of torque. We're pulling my tilt trailer with my we're pulling my project Jeep. We're pulling my project Jeep. That is a 87 Wrangler. That's a YJ. We're pulling with my tilt trailer, my Logan, the load trail. And we're at 7,500 pounds. The truck will actually tow 9,000 pounds, but we're at 75. So we're up here taking on the curves in the mountains, testing this out, see how well it handles. We're going to really put the, the test on that 10 speed, see if we can get some really good tow haul mode shifting with it. We have had problems in the past. I mean, it's only half ton with an exhaust brake, and it's built in with the tow haul mode. So one button does it all. So we're going to see what we can get it to downshift the way I like it to. We may even try the manual side of doing all that. But come join us for the review. This has got decent mirrors. They're not towing mirrors, but they made them a little longer. And this trailer, as you can see, you can see past the fender, which means you don't have to have a tow haul mirror to see over on this trailer, which is one of my favorite trailers. And it's uh, eight and a half feet wide, but you've got that view over the fenders. Yes, my favorite bumper on all these Chevys it used to be on the Avalanche. Now they made it bigger on these trucks. And then you have a little pocket here under this tunnel cover. This is a factory tunnel cover. But there's a stake pocket right up in there that they made it a little bigger. As you can see it there. So you got a handle. Then you can get your foot on there, made for my big feet, and this makes it so much easier with the trailer. I mean, I know they got tailgate wars going on here where they're always trying to make some fancy tailgate with all these steps built into it, and that's fine, but Chevy's the only one that's got that step that you can use with any trailer, gooseneck or bumper pull. I'm actually going to put that kind of bumper on my Ford. It'll be probably, I think, a Frontier brand, but anyway, we're going to do that. And there's my Gen Y. We always use a Gen Y adjustable hitch. We've got the weight distributing on there. Great control. And there is my, what's this thing called? Quick loader? Yes, it's quick loader. It cranks in, it, you know, it's spring loaded, so it'll actually wrap itself up. You don't have to worry about tangling it all up. Got that on the front. And there's another Gen Y hitch. That's that new Rebel. I love that. We're going to put our snow plow on it. We're going to put our winch on it. We're going to put that uh, really cool Patriot. Uh, tow hook from Gen Y on there when we get stuck in the Jeep and we got we just put a new steering wheel in we're gonna put new seats gonna put uh, lockers uh, hopefully next week and there's my shock strap I've been using those for years it's got that neoprene whatever dog bone in there that keeps the thing tight which is what you want and coming up in a video you'll see me fix all this wiring mess when I pull this in the snow in a slush this back set of wires on the fender, you just get covered in snow and then it pulls out of the socket and you got a big old basketball of snow bounce around back here. So I'm gonna put cable on it, put some a rubber grommet on it and tuck all that in tight this week. There's that park brake that I really like. You just push that in for park brake and push it in again to release it. I like the e-brakes now on these trucks. And there's the mode button which has tow haul which I'm in. You just twist the knob and of course your full drive. This is all on the left side of the steering wheel and you got your fog lights, your cab lights, then you can turn up the dash lights and there's all your other light controls. Somewhere near there it is, there's four wheel drive. Got it too high, you can't put it in auto. And there boys and girls, that's the brake controller. It's in the perfect spot. It's on the left side of the steering wheel, it's down in the bottom of the center stack where your screen is. This is where you put your brake. I like it. They've all doing that now in the Suburbans and the Chevy big 
sport utilities are still putting them on the left side, but oh well, we're halfway there with that battle. Well, this is today's rig. The RST Silverado Z71 package. Cruising up here between Longmont and Estes. There's the Jeep and the trailer. Also got some special lights from Australia we're gonna put on here. But there you go. Isn't that a good looking rig? There's those big 20 inch wheels. So you can tell we are squatting. We've got a little closer to the fender well there than we are in the front. We're using a weight distributing hitch. We could probably tighten them up a little bit more, but that's where we're set now. Don't go away, Mr. Chuck.TV. We'll be right back. Like the gauge cluster, easy to rig gauges like I'm used to. And then you know, the tow haul mode, you see the little trailer there, little trailer there between the two wheel drive and the drive. And that stays on, just like that little round circle there, the cruise control. It stays on so you don't have to keep pushing it on every time, which I like. I like it when tow haul mode stays there, and I like it when. Cruise control, I just have to hit set. Well, there's my lithium battery. And I'm gonna get a couple of uh, RV plugs to put around the outside of these studs so I can isolate the, win the winch. That's the winch cables there, the big ones. I'm gonna put it uh, like I had the other battery. I'm gonna put one of those <coughs> offset cables you use in RVs on the side so I can isolate the battery or the uh, these winch cables so I can take them off quickly if I need to take the winch off. I gotta add the jack to it. Well I'm about to ready to head up the mountains take a little different scenery route this time we're going for 34 instead of 36 so you see a little more rock. I love this route. Well, we are in this 2021 Baby Diesel Duramax 1500 Silverado. It's an RST. Now, the, the models on this, there's a lot of them. They changed them from the old days. You know, when I grew up, it was, uh, what was it, Custom. And then it was like Cheyenne, Scottsdale, Silverado, I think. And those are easy to remember. Well, now, you know, it starts off with a work truck, the WT, which they had for a while. And then go to a custom, and then it's an LT or ST, which is what this is. So it's kind of mid range. Then there's a custom trail boss, the LTZ, the LT trail boss, and the high country. So, my goodness, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, eight or nine. Looks like eight, but man, that's a lot of ones to keep track of. So this is a pretty nice package. I mean, this has got like leather seats and all that in it. And it's pretty capable. This little diesel, it is the fastest of the three. It's faster than the Ford. It's faster than the Ram. Now the Ram does a little better job of braking coming down the hill, even though this has an exhaust brake, it has tow haul mode and built-in brake controller, factory brake controller. But, uh, and it's a 10 speed, but it's just, it's just, the tow haul mode doesn't do what you think it would, and it does not exhaust brake. You can't tell it's there, even though it's there. I mean, I, I know there's just a little bit of programming they could do to make this the perfect truck, because I do like this truck, because it's fast. You know, it pulls a trailer very well, going up the hills, it's got plenty of power. And I like the hood on it, it's actually great visibility, it's not got all the extra plastic on it. It's, uh, it's got plenty of vision over the corners. And then, uh, you know, it's the mirrors are decent. I'm pulling this this tilt trader, which is eight and a half feet wide, but you can see over the fenders. So this is, these aren't the toying mirrors, but they do well. They made these a little bigger than they were. They made them, you know, it's longer, so you get more, more reach out of them. 
This is actually rated to tow 9,000 pounds. Now we're pulling 7,300 pounds, tilt trader with my Jeep Project Jeep on there. So we're 75, so we're not quite maxed out. But uh, this is the cherry red one with the, of course, jet black interior. But it's that inline six diesel, like semis and tractors have. They seem to build torque easier and they can lug better than a V8 does. So this is, you know, maybe this is the future of diesels and pickup trucks. I don't know. It is the, the realization in semis was inline six diesels. That's what most of them are. I mean, I've driven some V8s, and some two stroker Detroit diesels in the old days, and lots of cats in line six 3406s. But anyway, yeah, so this is an interesting truck. We waited a long time for this to come out. And, you know, it's rated at 26 on the highway, the EPA on it. In the city, it's 22 and combines 24. Now, I've been getting oh, somewhere around 23 or just overall. So that's beating the combined. Now, with the trader right now, I'm averaging, according to the computer, 14.3, which is good. Most of these gas engines will get real close to 10 miles to the gallon. Where this diesel, it's pulling up pretty well at 14. That's how diesels are. If you tow the traders a lot, they pay for themselves. If you don't tow a trader a lot, yeah, it takes a long time. It takes a lot of miles. But uh, it's kind of the part of how you make a decision on these trucks. Yeah, it's got five star side crashes. Looks like it's got a lot of four stars. I'm not sure why what's making it drop the four star on the frontal crash or the rollover. But anyway, that's what it is. And the payload is respectable. It's a 1709. The truck itself weighs 54.91. But uh, yeah, it's. A very interesting truck and it's you know it's one of my favorites in this size of class it is my favorite diesel i think it's got quite a few advantages to it and you know ram's done it come a long ways ford i don't know you don't hardly see an ad for me hardly even see their diesel trucks i know they're selling some but it's 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 not been the big powerhouse we thought it was it is decent for power but it certainly is like its last place for fuel mileage and this one, I, you know, they're neck and neck between this and the Ram. But I think this does beat a little bit on fuel mileage. Uh, where the Ram excels is, you know, going downhill with your tow haul mode and, and all of that. Even without an exhaust brake, the Ram does really well. This has all the tools on this Chevy Baby Duramax diesel. This has all the right tools to really be a great truck. They just need a little few few programming changes. I'm tired of whining about them. I know you're sick of hearing me saying the same thing. It's just this truck has so much potential. I would really like to see it be the truck it can be. And the MSRP on this puppy is looks like fifty six thousand nine hundred and fifty, which is you know that's very reasonable for what it is. I mean it's not a high country by any means, but. It's got most of what I would want. It doesn't have all quite the same camera selection. I'd like to see it. But, you know, it depends on, you know, what your cash flow is. A lot of people can afford this truck that can't afford a high country truck. So, anyway. Let's see. What else is interesting about this truck? Uh, it's 277 horsepower, 460 torque. So, it's a torque monster, which is what you want out of these kind of trucks. But uh, and a 10 speed, I'm, I'm big on 10 speeds, even though Ram does well with eight speeds. Uh, Nissan now on their Titans at nine speed. And of course, Toyota, which hasn't changed in, I don't know how many years, is a six speed. So this and the Ford 150 are the 10 speeds. So they were actually made in the same plant, the Ford and the GM 10 speeds, at least for this half ton size they're different in the heavy duty size but and i love the bumpers on the back of this i'm actually getting them on my ford <laughs> because i pull trailers all the time all those fancy tailgates everybody has you can't use with a trailer most of the time it used to be nothing but just power keep giving us more power and now you know at some point they're going to go so far up where it's going to be ridiculous you know it's uh but this 9,000 pounds, I think it's very reasonable for a half ton. 
Uh, General Motors was leading. They dropped back, so Ford's leading that now. But uh, really, for half ton, I mean, 19,000 pounds, I'm not sure why you'd want to go much heavier. Because, you know, these don't have a heavy-duty rear axle like a heavy-duty truck does. And, you know, they don't have the brakes of a heavy-duty truck. So if you're going to get much beyond all that, uh, you know, you need to be in a heavy-duty class. Of course, my 150, I, weigh, I, I go to the max. I have called 12,800 with that. I wouldn't suggest everybody doing that because you'll wear your truck out, wear your brakes out. But uh, if you do it all the time, you know, do it once in a while, it's not a big deal. But that's, you know, that's part of the competition, the marketing scheme. They all want to have that big, big towing number. And, oh well, you know, that's enough of that. I complain about that all the time, too. I do like to complain about things. But Chevy, all the GM trucks are such an improvement. They put the steering wheel straight now, so everything lines up. The brake controller is perfect over here where I can get to it. And I like that. So, uh, yeah, I just got through adjusting again. This trailer's got new brakes on it, so I don't have to. And I've got them broken in now, so I can back off on the, the brake gain setting on it. Now, I like the uh, the park brake on it. It's the e-brake. On Ford, you know, you flip it up, and then you flip it down. You flip it up to turn it on you flip it down to turn it off GM you just push the button you push it it's on you push it it's off simple good system great visibility on this truck so there's a lot of good things to say about it I guess I can give you a rundown of some of the other things on here it's got all the normal stuff that they have to have by law and this has the auto locking rear differential so we can't push a button I like pushing the button to lock that rear end and this one actually locks kind of like a limited slip, which means it has to spin to kick in. Stability track with trailer sway, control, hill start, assist. It's got the trailer package with a hitch guide. Yes, that's a camera. And a bread, pay, brake pad wear indicator. What does that tell you? Or does it just make noise like they always did in the past? That I don't know. Of course, this is a pretty loaded truck. It's got dual zone temperature thing going on here. But, uh, let's see. That diesel option on this is 2390 If I remember it correctly, that's the what it would cost you to get the 6.2 gas engine, which is one of my favorite engines. But when you buy diesel for the same price, I would probably go with the diesel as much as I like that 6.2. Because I do tow traders a lot. And that's where the diesel shines on paying for itself. Uh, rear sliding power window. They've all got that. And I don't know why. I mean, when I was on a farm back in the 70s, we used to get that thing. It was a cool thing. But if you had straw or hay in the bed, it would suck it all in with that back window. So I stopped using them. And I do like that. I think General Morris came out of the first. The rear window defrost, which I thought was ridiculous. You don't need it. But there's times in Colorado where I've used it. So I'm all for that rear, rear defrost. And let's see. 120 volt instrument panel, cargo bed, power outlets. I like that. Well, now we're going downhill in tow haul mode. 2,000 RPM. 60 miles an hour. Let's see. Oh. There, we got to downshift once. I don't know what gear it's in, because Chevy doesn't want to tell us what they the Ford Ram do to tell you which gear you're in. But anyway, we're at 2300 RPM. Going downhill pretty good here. There's a little ways out of S is coming off the mountain. Staying right around 2400 RPM. Well, that's cool. It's on my def range now is 962. So I got a long ways to go. Anyway, <laughs> about 2,500 RPM, which is what you want. I noticed that slower speed did shift about three times. Real small shifts, real low RPMs. But here's where you need it. You need it, you know, that 60 to 70 mile an hour range where you really need tow haul mode to kick in and exhaust brake. And this one, I, uh, it's a very quiet truck. It's probably one of the most quiet diesels out there. You don't know when the exhaust brake is coming on by sound like you normally would in a diesel. All you know is about watching the RPM gauge. <clears throat> but since they're tied together, you can't separate the tow haul mode 
a system on this and exhaust brake so you don't know which one it is and you don't hear the exhaust brake note to tell you that's that's what it is so you're just kind of guessing but it's not holding me at a higher rpm if it was getting up to 3000 if it would shift down to 3000 it would uh, hold me a lot better because you're not getting a whole lot of engine brake at say 2000 rpm so anyway, just take just a little bit of programming there and they can really make this thing slow you down. Let's hope you're listening, Chevy. I love the truck. I just think you need to do a little more work on the tow haul mode programming. So yeah, we're, we're going downhill at least 7%, maybe 8 I don't have any way of measuring that on this road. But, yeah, it's gotten up to 25 it's never going to get high enough to where it's going to have to uh, upshift, which is good because upshift means you're going to go faster downhill. I want to downshift. I'm really having a higher RPM, so I'm only holding 7,500 pounds of cargo back there in the trailer and the Jeep together. 7,500 pounds. This is a 323, so it's made for fuel mileage. It's another thing when you have those fuel mileage axle ratios. You don't get as much engine braking because you don't get your RPMs up there. I, I'm guessing I'm probably in seventh gear. But anyway, um, yeah, if I had a 355, 373 axle ratio, the RPMs would be higher, but it would be braking better. So I don't know. I guess if you were to buy one of these, you might want, if you're towing a lot, set it up for the lowest ratio they have. Uh, you know, you're not going to get the best fuel mileage but you'll get decent fuel mileage with this truck but basically get the uh, rpms higher when you're down when you're grade shifting down shifting let that exhaust brake work see now we're 1800 rpm which is nothing we're just coasting it's not really giving me much braking even though i'm still at a pretty good drop here descent grade wise i gotta get some kind of meter that actually measures that i'm sure there's a program Probably already in my phone if I just learned how to use it to tell me what percentage we are. But you're definitely going to have to use your foot brake some going downhill with the trailer. And I'd like to see the transmission help me all again. And the exhaust brake. Big advantage of an exhaust brake. You're the only one in the half ton class, but they're not taking advantage of it. It needs a little different programming going on too. Calibration, that's what it's all about. Give me some better calibration. Get my exhaust brake working, get my, my tow haul mode working, slowing me down so I'm not riding the brakes. That's what I want. That's what I want for Christmas, GM. Give me that because this is to be the best truck you can buy with just a couple little bit of calibration differences. It's so neat. We finally have all the half tons, have them as far as the three, big three. We waited for that for decades, and now with electrics, all that work they finally did to give us these little diesels is probably going to go away with the new electric trucks coming out. Maybe not. Maybe this one will they'll, they'll make the right tweaks to it to make it just a wonderful truck and compete with those electrics. Because it's coming. We're not going to be able to stop the electric truck from coming, but uh, everybody still likes the purr of a internal combustion engine especially the noise of a V8 so maybe we'll have two classes of trucks we'll have the electric and we'll have the internal combustion engine that would, that would be cool we'll let them decide what the demand is the city folks they may all buy electrics and the country folks may all buy all combustion engines and I'll probably have them both may make the price of used trucks go up because everybody's going to want to buy those last V8s out there. But that's probably five years away before you have to get too excited about that. But it's progress. Ford showed the progress with the hybrid. I'm sure GM's going to have one. Ram's going to have one that we can go play with. They've all had a few of them in the past that were not the best. And now they've figured it out going to be some cool hybrids coming out and some cool full electric ones coming out. Well, look at this. Trains have had them for probably 60, 70 years. 
they have a diesel generator running electric motors to run those big trains and what they used to call the big steam shovels the big mining cranes they're like a giant excavator those are electric just like a locomotive so even though not everybody has known it's out there we've had electric powered equipment for decades but anyway now I'm at 3,000 RPM. I guess I can manually shift it. And see what it does. I'm probably going to put it in manual mode and do that. Maybe we'll do that next run. Wow. Because it is getting 3,000 RPM now. That's what I want. I want 3,000 RPM coming down this hill. Huh, maybe the, the grade dropped that much. I can't tell. I need a machine, I need a little meter. Now it's running over. Running over 3,000. And I can hear the engine. Just wish I could hear the exhaust brake. I knew the exhaust brake was engaging. Of these had a turbo gauge too, you know, for pressure, that would tell me a lot too. And General Motors is always against putting on too many gauges, and everybody else has them on their turbos and on their diesels. Why can't we have that? That would kind of tell me what that exhaust brake is doing. Yeah, see, now this is what I like because you know, we're not fueling it, we're at 3,300 RPM, and you know that high of RPM there's no fuel going in there because on the Duramax, the big Duramax 6.6 .6 from GM it will wrap up there over 4,000 RPM and they tell me because there's, not, there's no fuel going in there, it's not going to blow anything up and it still gives you some of that back pressure on the engine, some compression to help slow you down, which is engine braking back pressure there I sped up and I got it to shift but that's still 2600 RPM that's all what you want you know that way you can come down the hill without touching the gas or the brakes that's the idea of all this calibrated properly see now it's acting like it should when it goes between 2000 and 3000 a little more control without burning up the brakes so that's handling the way I want it to right there Gonna go uphill. So we can see some elk up here. Yeah, there's an elk crossing. I love driving the mountains. That's too cool. Up and over the hills we go. Now we're going to drop again. Let's see what she does. Add up to 3,000 RPM. Now we're dropping down to 1,800 RPM. Cruising downhill. I wonder. It's my favorite cherry juice place. I suppose I can sneak in here. And it's got the leather package for $760. And I like it. I remember when I was AAA selling cars for AAA, which I dealt with, you know, the retired people. And they always wanted leather. And it, you know, it wasn't a luxury thing. It's that when you get a leather seat, unless it's one of these grippy ones, it's easier to slide in the seat. Where fabric, you know, can grab you, and you gotta move around to get into it. That's why the older people like leather seats. It's not that they want to be show off how rich they are. They just it's an easier seat to slide in and out of. So remember that when you get older, you gotta get leather seats. Yep, the rear axle is a 323. I was gonna to try to look that up. Which is the fuel mileage ratio? You know, a towing ratio would be like a 355 or a 373, but now with a 10 speed, they can take a, a, a fuel mileage ratio, I call them, of 323, and with that triple overdrives, you can make first and second real low, so you don't have to have that low gearing on the inner trucks. So I'm trying to get used to that, and this one gets up and skin goes. So I, I, I think that is going to be a future sim. I did it a long time ago, you know, 18 speeds and 16 speeds, 12 speeds, all that. They used to be like a 
555 rear end axle ratio then they got all the way up to 410 and some are 373 just like a pickup truck that's what the semis are well, they got you know some of them have 18 speed some have you know less and that's what i drove was an 18 speed road ranger on a four and a quarter cat and uh yeah smooth but with all these extra gears it gives you more options for you know saving fuel and this is that fuel mileage leader.